After the original Transformers toy line's massively successful first year in America, Hasbro's Japanese partner Takara decided that they wanted a piece of the action. They imported the toys to Japan, and even dubbed the animated series for a Japanese broadcast. But before long, they were creating new toys, characters, cartoons, and comics of their own, steadily expanding the world of the Transformers for the Japanese market until it took on a separate life of its own. These are the basics on the history of Generation 1 in Japan. When aired in Japan, the Transformers cartoon was broken up into two separate series. In 1985, the first two seasons were aired under the title Fight Super Robot Lifeform Transformers, while in 1986 the third season was rebranded Fight Super Robot Lifeform Transformers 2010. The original American version of the season was set in 2006, but the Japanese dub changed it to 2010, hence the new title. The cartoon was supplemented by full-color spreads published in Kodansha's monthly TV magazine, which provided kids with more information about the characters and their world. In particular, since the Transformers the movie wasn't released in Japan before 2010 began the way it was in America, and wouldn't be available there until it came out on home video in 1989, it fell to the magazine to provide the essential information on what had happened in the time gap between series. These spreads were the most consistent element of Japanese Transformers marketing, published every month until 1992. A handful of original clip shows were assembled for the Japanese broadcast of the series, but the first major piece of Japanese original Transformers animation was released in 1986. This year, Takara chose to market the new Combiner Team toys, the Aerialbots, Stunticons, Protectabots and Combaticons, and a few other figures from the 1986 product line under the dedicated subheader of Scramble City. To promote the toys, a brand new Japanese exclusive episode entitled Scramble City Mobilization was released direct to video in April of that year. Taking place in the time gap between the second season and the movie, the story centered on the Autobots' efforts to construct a mobile battle fortress, Metroplex, aka the Scramble City of the title. Introducing the giant Autobot and several other characters like Ultra Magnus, Trypticon and the new 1986 cassettes months in advance of their debuts in America. The same month, a tie-in manga also began publication in TV magazine, which would continue to run in parallel with the cartoon for the next few years, telling new stories interspersed between its episodes. 1987 was the year in which the Japanese and American handling of the Transformers began to more noticeably diverge. This year, the American cartoon came to an end with the three-part miniseries The Rebirth, but Takara wanted to keep Transformers cartoons on the air, and so opted not to import The Rebirth, instead producing a brand new 35-episode series entitled The Headmasters. This series continued from where Season 3 had left off, ignoring the events of the Rebirth and taking the story in a different direction, marking the point at which the American and Japanese cartoons firmly branched off into two separate continuities. Set in the year 2011, the Headmasters introduced the 1987 toy range, chief among them the titular Headmasters, small robots from a Cybertronian colony on the planet Master, who transformed into heads that connected to and controlled full-size Transformer bodies called Transtectors. The series was full of momentous events. Optimus Prime died once more, Cybertron was destroyed, prompting Rodimus Prime to depart on a quest for a new home, leaving command of the Autobots in the hands of Headmaster leader Fortress Maximus. Ultra Magnus was killed by the Decepticon Ninja Six Shot, and Galvatron also perished, with cunning Decepticon Headmaster Scorponok taking his place as leader. Further emphasizing the growing divide between Hasbro and Takara's handling of the franchise, the Japanese toy line for this year contained several additional figures not released by Hasbro, 
including the Autobot combiner team, the Trainbots, and Blaster and Soundwave's upgraded forms, Twincast and Soundblaster, who were all regular supporting cast members in the cartoon, plus the original Targetmaster characters, Ricochet and Artfire, who featured in the manga. At the end of the Headmasters, the Transformers left Earth a clean break that set the stage for Takara's drastically different approach to the 1988 toy line. While most of the figures released in Japan this year were the same as those released by Hasbro, many were given new colour schemes and brand new names and identities, completely reinvented into new characters who starred in this year's new Japanese original animated series, Super God Master Force. Set years after the Headmasters, Master Force revealed the existence of the Pretenders, Autobots who had been living in secret on Earth for millennia, disguised as humans. When the Decepticons returned, now led by the energy being Devil Zed, who sought to create the ultimate life form by fusing human beings and Transformers together, the Pretenders recruited human allies of their own and granted them the power of the Master Force, so they could connect to Transtectors and become Transformers themselves in order to defend their world. For instance, the toy known in Hasbro markets as the Autobot Headmaster Nightbeat was reinvented by Takara to become French schoolgirl Minerva, the first female Transformer toy, while the new Powermaster version of Optimus Prime was reimagined as Jinrai, a Japanese trucker who controlled a transtector that merely looked like the revered Autobot leader. Original Japanese toys for this year's line included pretender leader Metalhawk, God Bomber, who could merge with Jinrai into God Jinrai, and Jinrai's Decepticon arch-rival Overlord, Devil Zed's second-in-command, controlled by the husband and wife team of Giga and Mega. Master Force was followed in 1989 by Transformers Victory. This series was set in 2025 and told the story of the newest Autobot Supreme Commander, Star Saber, as he and his troops defended Earth against the forces of Decepticon Emperor Deathsaurus, who sought to pillage the energy of the planet to reactivate his deadly battle fortress. By this point, Takara's handling of Transformers had diverged almost completely from Hasbro's. The 89 toy line was made up almost entirely of either Japanese original figures or significantly altered American ones. In addition to the two leaders, there was Victory Leo, with whom Star Saber combined to form Victory Saber, and high-profile combiner teams like the Autobot Brain Masters and the Decepticon Breast Force. As with past cartoons, manga for both Master Force and Victory were published in TV magazine, but unlike the preceding comics, they were not part of the cartoon's continuity, instead consisting of alternate tellings of the series' storylines. Victory was the final full-length Generation 1 television cartoon and manga. Transformers was now on the wane. 1990 was the final year of the original toy line in the United States. But the brand still had a little life left in it in Japan, allowing it to continue there for a few further years, albeit in a diminished state. The 1990 toy line revolved around the tiny Micromasters, released by Hasbro the previous year, with the addition of the Takara original Powered Masters, three new motorized Autobots who transformed into Micromaster bases, and Metro Titan, a Decepticon recolor of Metroplex. Picking up where the Victory cartoon had left off, the storyline for this year, entitled Transformers Zone, involved the Decepticons' new leader, the supernatural creature Violin Jiger, seeking to obtain the universe-remaking power of the mysterious Zodiac. A one-shot Zone manga was released in April, followed in July by a single direct-to-video episode both of which told the same story of the Powered Master's first battle with Violin Jiger's Demon Generals, nine of the mightiest Decepticons from past series, and ended with Powered Master Die Atlas succeeding Star Saber as Autobot leader. This was to be the very last Japanese original Generation 1 episode. 
with no further cartoons or comics in the works, it fell to the color spreads in TV magazine to tell the rest of the Zone storyline, a function that they would continue to serve for the next two years. The 1991 toy line was made up mostly of the remaining MicroMasters that had been released by Hasbro in 1990. Takara Original Toys this year consisted of a new team of six MicroMasters who could combine into Six Liner, and the Battle Stars, three large figures that transformed into MicroMaster bases Sky Gary, Grandis, and the centerpiece of the line, Star Convoy, the resurrected Optimus Prime, hence the title of the series, Return of Convoy. Convoy being Optimus Prime's name in Japan. The Autobots had restored Prime to life in this new form through the power of the Zodiac in response to a new attack against Earth by the alien Dark Nova. Dark Nova countered this by resurrecting Prime's old enemy Megatron as Super Megatron, who Star Convoy battled in another one-shot manga, with TV magazine spreads again telling the rest of the story. Finally, in 1992, there was Operation Combination a small series centered on various new combiner characters as they defended the Earth against the forces of the Decepticon High Regent Scratch. New toys included four new MicroMaster combiners in the style of Six Liner, the Turbomasters and Predators, who were also available in Europe the same year, and classic combiner teams the Protectobots and the Combaticons were recolored to create new combiners Guard City and Battle Gaia. The story of Operation Combination still sat even after all these years within the continuity of the original cartoon was told entirely through TV magazine spreads, and its conclusion in October marked the quiet end of the original Transformers franchise in Japan. In the early days of the internet and online fandom, the world of Japanese-exclusive Transformers toys and cartoons was a mysterious thing about which a lot wasn't properly understood. The Headmasters, Master Force and Victory cartoons were all dubbed into English by Hong Kong-based studio Omni Productions and broadcast in Southeast Asia circa 1990, and bootleg VHS recordings of these versions of the cartoons would be the first, and for years only, opportunity English-speaking fans had to experience the series. Despite the dub's infamously terrible quality, inspiring fandom in-jokes and memes that persist to this day. <laughs> What's happened to the Headmasters? Can't they fight without Chrome Dome? Fortress Maximus has come himself. Okay, then I shall get Fortress Maximus to fight me! <laughs> but thanks to the growth of the internet and eventually official subtitled DVD releases of the series in the 21st century, knowledge of the Japanese side of the world of the Transformers has only spread, and today we find characters who were once obscure unknowns from the other side of the world sharing the screen, the printed page, and the toy store shelf with Optimus Prime and Bumblebee. But the story of the Japanese Generation 1 universe didn't end in 1992. Unlike in America, where the original animated series was just one of many versions of the Generation 1 story, in Japan, the cartoon and its expanded timeline have always been regarded as the main Transformers story, and hence it's been revisited and added to constantly. When the Transformers Generation 2 toy line launched in Japan in 1995, it was treated as a direct continuation of the cartoon universe. The same was true of Beast Wars and its Japanese original spin-offs, 1998's Beast Wars Second and 1999's Beast Wars Neo set tens of thousands of years in the future, and 2000's Car Robots, featuring characters from this era who travelled back in time to the present day. Similarly, virtually every new Generation 1 themed toy line released in Japan in the 21st century has been part of the cartoon universe. Usually written by fans turned professionals, the often ambitious stories crafted to accompany these series tend to make extensive use of continuity minutiae, slotting into available gaps all throughout the timeline. From the time and space bending stories of 2004's Binal Tech and Robot Masters, set between season 2 and the movie, to 2006's infamous Kiss Players, set between the movie and season 3, 
to 2012's Transformers United EX, bridging the gap between Operation Combination and Generation 2, and most recently Transformers Legends, which spans the entire timeline. Each story has built upon the contributions of the last, with detailed retcons that tie together plotlines from multiple different series and stories, from the widely known to the obscenely obscure, bringing everything closer and closer together into a more cohesive, if incredibly complex and sprawling universe that's still growing today and shows no signs of stopping. And those are the basics on Generation 1 in Japan. This is an episode I've been wanting to make since I started the basics, and I figured the second anniversary was as good a time as any. If you've enjoyed it, maybe hit like or subscribe, or consider supporting the show on Patreon. And don't miss next episode, which is one that you've all been asking for for about as long.